This is Strictly Business, presented by the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce. Sponsored in part by the Law Offices of Young Wooldridge, San Joaquin Community Hospital. And welcome back to Strictly Business. I'm Nathan Ollie, Manager of Government Affairs at the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce. Background checks are a usual part of the process when you hire a new employee. But how much information should be gathered and how should it be used? Marcia Sutton, the senior HR consultant with Barrett Business System, Barrett Business Services Incorporated, excuse me, is here to explain us more. Thanks for joining us, Marcia. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Nathan. So let's start at the beginning. Why is it important for employers to do these background checks on new hires? Well, one of the things when you're doing a background check uh you want to make sure, obviously, you have the person sign off that they're allowing to do it. But things that you want to look at when you call references, you know, is to find out about, you know, behavior, uh, work performance, those types of things. So you're making a good educated uh, selection of the person. And then if you do go beyond where you do... Um, criminal background check, that can be very important depending Mm. on what type of job someone's going to be in. If they're going to be around children or possibly in a healthcare setting where they would have, you know, um, oversight of patients and access to medications or drugs and that type of thing, you you want to make sure that, um, you know, they have a clean background as far as any criminal activity or that type of thing. Okay. Now, I can't just go start conducting background checks, who should do something like this? It's best to hire a third party who is um, an expert in that and has followed all the procedures to have access to court records and that type of thing. There's many out there that you can use. And again, you'd want to make sure you have somebody signing off on a release form that they're Uh, okay with you doing that background as well as if they want a copy of that background, they are entitled to have that sent to them as well. So there's many different companies out there that um, are licensed and have all the proper certifications and that type of thing to be doing background checks for companies. Okay. Uh, What's the average time frame? How long does it typically take to run a background check? Well, here in Kern County, it's really fast. Since most of our clients are here, it's usually within a day or two. What can hold it up is depending on the court process. If a court is a manual process to have records pulled, it can take anywhere from one to two weeks Mm -hmm. if on criminal background checks. But um, here in this county, it's pretty quickly as far as gathering the information. Good. Way to go, Kern County. (laughs) uh, And the, the average cost to an employer to do this? That's going to depend on um, how, one thing that'll drive that is how often you're doing background checks. And if you enter into a contract with a company that does that. So I just kind of ballpark would say um, average could be 25 to $50 oh, okay. if you're not doing them that often. We do them a lot, so we have a, sure. a, a a lower cost. It just it will get it'll depend on how often you're doing them and if you enter into a contract. So pretty reasonable mm-hmm. and, and certainly yes. a, certainly a worthy investment. If absolutely, you're, uh, okay. absolutely. So, uh, getting a little more in depth, what what kind of information am I looking for? I'm an employer and I'm I'm doing a background check on a potential new hire. What specifically am I looking for? Well, if you're if you're doing the part that you know, I call references where you call somebody's former supervisors. The things you want to look for there are usually, you know, depending on the requirements of the job, do they have that, you know, skill set? And as far as, you know, punctuality and attendance, depending again on what your, your setup is, if you need somebody to be in the office for set hours. And, um, also as far as how they, you know, uh, interacted with other people, if they had any areas that you would recommend for improvement, and, um, you know, strengths, that type of thing, as far as a a character type reference. The background in this uh, day and age, it's very limited things that you can do a credit check on. So you'd want to make sure that you had a position 
that qualified for you to actually be looking at someone's credit. That's very limited these days. So maybe if you're working in like a financial setting right. or something where you're working exactly. with money. Right. If you're handling cash or you have like you're in a banking type setting mm-hmm. where you have access to other people's social security numbers right. or account information, then yes, credit, you know, good credit habits, behaviors can be important. The criminal background, what I look for in my setting now at uh, Barrett Business Services is whether the person is maybe going to be around a a job site that would involve children Mm -hmm. or if they have, you know, um, a history of violence. Sure. For any type of job setting, we have, you know, we want we want to make sure that we're protecting all employees in the workplace and also, if something comes up in their background uh, that would relate to driving, um, being sure that they can be covered by the client's automobile policy if they are driving a company vehicle, okay. that type of thing can be really in, important. In addition to whatever insurances that they Ex- would have. Right, okay. exactly. Mm-hmm. Now, on the other side of the coin, if I'm a past employer, a supervisor or something like mm-hmm. that, and you call asking for background information, what am I allowed to say and what am I not allowed to say? Can I say, am I just allowed to say, well, this is when this person worked here and I'm verifying that they did work here from this time and this time, and what am I allowed to say? Well, most companies do have in place where they'll only verify the position and dates of employment and possibly salary. If a person wants to have you go further than that, then it's a best practice to have them sign a release that they can also speak about your performance. And naturally, people are probably not going to ask, sure. you know, an employer where they maybe had a, a negative situation happen or happened to get terminated. They're probably not going to ask them to, you know, be a reference. And it it can be tricky because... Um, You know, people can, you know, file complaints and that type of thing if they think someone is, you know, keeping them from getting a position or slandering them. So it can be kind of tricky. Most larger companies do just keep the dates of employment and position um, as as what they'll they'll give out. Okay. And when can I go too far? When when has an employer when can an employer be gathering too much information on a new hire? What's what's the line? Well, if you start asking questions that would be of a, a personal nature or that could be used to be discriminatory, such as, you know, if it's about age or does somebody have, you know, like if you use it to find out they have children about mm-hmm. whether they'd be able to, you know, be available, the full work shift, you know, the kind of the stereotypes we might form um, as far as, you know, anything that would be a protected um, class or protected category would be things you really want to stay away from. You really want to keep, if, you, if you're calling up a reference that that di- particular direction, keep it based on, you know, work performance and behavior, mm-hmm. not anything personal about the person. Okay. You mentioned stereotypes and how those kind of come into play mm-hmm. sometimes. How, how would you recommend an employer remain objective after you learn some information about a potential new hire? Well, when you're evaluating candidates, I would just take that out of the mix as far as making your decision, Mm -hmm. and because you do want to keep it again based on you know the skill set experience that somebody has to do. So, a good thing to do there would be if you had like say you had three candidates that were um, equal as far as that, you know, really looking at that and making your decision based on those things and taking the personal items out of it. Okay. Now, one of the one of the things that I know a lot of folks are worried about anymore is their social media presence. Mm-hmm. You know, I have a Facebook page, and I could say whatever I want. And some employers may want to look at that. What is what are the boundaries there, and some of the things to look for? Well, there isn't a law that you can't go out and just search for somebody on social media, mm-hmm. as even in um, an employer setting or company setting. But there are um, guidelines, uh, actually, in January 2013, there was a law in California. You can't ask a, a, a prospective employee or a current employee 
for access to their social media oh, if see. they have passwords and that type of thing. Okay, so if it's set to private, you right, can't you ask. can't ask them. They, okay. they are not open to disclose that. Again, if you do go out and search people, like do a Google search or whatever it might be, or go onto Facebook or Twitter. If you can identify things about them that are in a protected category, for instance, you know whether they're married, sexual orientation, um, ancestry, or race, it again you cannot use that legally right. um, to make a decision on hiring them. I have to say I was pretty stunned at the last company I worked at when we did a, a like a overview then after some candidates were in and and somebody had gone out and was looking at somebody's Facebook page I was kind of surprised but oh, yeah. it it it, is ha happen. and it happened and it's probably happening more and more with all the focus on social media that we see mm -hmm. um, when we you know turn on the TV or we go on the news or we go to Yahoo or Google so know, just so. a reminder that you never know who's looking at That's your Facebook true. when you yeah, put something right, up there. Right. right. So, and that works the other way too, is if you are in a, someone looking for a job, you know, being careful about, you know, being more neutral on some of the hot topics like religion and politics might be a good idea because even though somebody takes it hopefully out of the mix right. of hiring, it can you, still kind of be there that they're like, well, I don't know. You never know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who's okay. So. A lot of good information on background checks. Marcia Sutton, BBSI, thank you so much for joining oh, us this you're morning. You're welcome. We Thanks, Nathan. It. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back after this with more Strictly Business. Stay tuned.